friends and fellow flute enthusiasts. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Johnny's Gear Reviews. In this episode, we're going to be looking at one of my favorite amps. Uh, this is one that I've had for many, many years. Uh, this is actually the second one that I've owned. The first one I ended up selling to a friend because I didn't need two of them. It was red. This one was black. Uh, the red was just a little bit uh, too bold for my taste. So we're going to be looking at the Roland Street Cube. Now Roland has been producing guitar amps for a very long time. And though this is marketed as a guitar amp, man, this is my go-to as a flute performance. I'm going to focus mostly on using it as a mic input. Now it does have another input for guitar and it's got a lot of fancy settings. To be honest with you, I don't touch those. But if you're looking at this for a um, vocal or flute and guitar and a backing track, um, this is a great unit. It features two, um, two speakers here. Uh, they are two six and a half speakers in here. It gives five watts of power, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I gotta tell you, this thing is a powerhouse. So the other equipment that I have here is I have my trusty Shure SM58 microphone. I also have a little windsock here. Um, I really like these, especially when you get into, depending on the flute that you play, sometimes when you tongue notes, that can be really expressive in a microphone. So this, um, think of it as like a pop filter. Uh, normally those look like the rings uh, in front of the microphone. Uh, when a singer uses that, it keeps the puh sound from you know really getting into the microphone and gives a little bit cleaner sound. So when we tongue notes into um, the microphone, especially if we're using a condenser, that can just be amplified. This helps soften that. And this is to be used for, especially outdoors in windy environments. Uh, doesn't help you play in the wind, but it helps the microphone not pick up all the roaring wind sound. The other thing I have is I have a mic cable, standard XLR cable here, and then this is the power supply for um, the amp. Uh, just plugs into the back and plugs into the wall. But here's what I love, love about this unit here. It is powerful, but what helps that too is not helps it, but what I love about it is I don't always have to rely on the power. Um, I've been in situations where I've played at state parks. I've played off the grid. There are no electrical outlets. This thing runs for about you know, 14 hours or so on six AA batteries. So I always keep AA batteries in my flute bag when I travel, uh, especially with this guy. Um, but that's substantial, 14 hours. I can do a few gigs running off of those six AA batteries and not have to be plugged in to anything. So I'm going to hook this stuff up. Uh, if you've never done this process, um, it's very simple to get this hooked up and ready to go to play your flute. I also have a mic stand ready to go back here that I've unfolded and set up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, uh, even for this, I'm going to go ahead and put my um, windsock over my microphone. Um, I like this even in a recording environment. Um, and then the cord here, the XLR, one is female, one is male. Enter the, the male end here into the microphone. Click, set it up here into the mic. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit so when I play... There we go. And then you take the other end and you plug it right into the top here. So this is for the microphone. Just wanna go in until it clicks. So you'll see two settings here. There's a line and a mic. I like to use the mic. And a good rule of thumb is when you set these things up, make sure the volume is all the way down. Uh, you'd hate to turn this thing on and get a loud squeal out of it as soon as you start. So that's it on putting the um, putting the microphone in. Oh, see, there's another click. I didn't have it quite all the way in. Um, the bass and the treble, just kind of, I like to keep these guys straight up. I don't worry too much with that. Here's a little bit of effects here, a delay and a reverb. Now with this, I can get a little bit, I like this natural reverb here. Some people argue that it's not enough when you play solo flute. I played a lot of gigs with this cranked on the reverb. 
I don't prefer a lot of delay in my flute uh, voice, but I'll show you the difference between these two. I'll play it for you. So let's start there now. All right, so now I have a flute and I don't have this turned on. Um, I will be adjusting the, um, the volume in this video because I don't want you to have to reach for your volume button to turn this down. So I'll try to get it equalized as far as volume. I am working with an amplifier. Um, and I'm in a, you know, a natural room here and I just want to play the flute for you so you get an idea of what it sounds like in the room before we go and apply some effects of this. So here we go. So completely natural. Now, I'm going to turn this guy on. I'm using battery operation here. I've got my power cord laying over there. Don't really need it for this demo. So turn it on, should get a red light. That means things are good. So I've got the volume turned all the way down on this. I've got the mic button pressed because I'm using a microphone and not a line. So I'm just gonna turn this up maybe maybe two, uh, one third of the way. Bass and trouble there. It's off right now. I'm gonna turn on maybe about half of the delay. And I'm gonna turn this volume down a little. It's already picking up what I'm doing. So here we go. This is about uh, half of the delay. You hear that little echo? I'm gonna turn it up all the way. Again, happening. So I'm going to switch over to reverb about halfway, about 50% of the reverb knob is, uh, is turned on. Here's what this sounds like. turn it all the way on. So now it's cranked all the way up. So there's a quick demo just using the vocal, um, the microphone and flute. Um, this is a very common um, effort when you go to play solo flute somewhere. This is great for flute circles. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. So all of these components here are for the guitar. Um, so you could plug in a guitar here and you could uh, adjust this. There's some preset things here on uh, this particular unit. And so for example, like classic or acoustic or um, black panel, Brit combo. So these just kind of are some presets on the changing the voicing and the effects of the guitar itself. Um, over here, we also have some new effects and I toyed a little bit with plugging um, taking this XLR and turning it into a quarter inch and plugging it in here and you get some okay results with um, playing that uh, with all these different effects. If you want to noodle and experiment with that um, you're welcome to. Um, personally I would rather get an effects pedal um, that's made for um, that I can have a little bit more fine tuning with some extra features on it. Uh, but again, you have a gain, a volume, a delay, reverb, and then some more effects over here for the guitar input. Now, the other thing is they have a stereo aux in. So if you play, say, with an iPod or iPhone or tablet, or even plug in your MP3 player with a standard like headphone jack um, cord, uh, you can do that here. 
The only con to this, um, it works very well. I just wish that they had a volume control for this particular um, this particular input. Uh, you can also have stereo phones out, so you can plug in headphones, and you know you'll still hear your flute in the room, but all the effects and the processing will come to you in uh, your headphones. So the only downside to this would be that um, that aux input, if it had its own um, volume. Several times I have to go over to my iPad and change uh, the volume there, which I'm glad I can do it there. I just wish there was something here that I could dial in uh, a little bit easier. So there you have it. This is the Roland Street Cube. I've got some more metrics and um, some stats on this particular unit in the description below, um, as well as some links on places where you can uh, look at this and uh, check out some other reviews for uh, folks that are using these in like guitar play and things like that. So um, this one retails at around 300. You might be able to find them used for around 200, maybe in your local music store. Um, much worth the investment. Um, they also have a micro cube, which doesn't have as many features. Um, so basically it's like half of one of these. It's just one speaker instead of it having two. So thanks for tuning in to this episode. We've got more gear reviews and flute videos on the way. We'll see you next time. Hi friends, thanks so much for watching this video. If you're interested in growing as a flute player, click below for more information. If you're looking for more videos like this, see the playlist in the corner. Lastly, please consider subscribing so you're notified every time new videos drop. Thanks.